Today on Rock the Park. This is 190 yeah. million years old. We're in the company of giants. One rib is the size of my entire body. Wow. And tackling some giant waves. You know when the helmets go on, something good's gonna happen. Oh. Oh. On a river that's full of surprises. Oh. Oh. For a second, I feel like I'm levitating. And it all starts right now. Yeah. I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. Woo! We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Woo! Get set to rock the park. We're near the border of Colorado and Utah, about to venture into a park that's frozen in time. This area contains hundreds of uncovered bones and fossils, and most of them are from dinosaurs. We're gonna be exploring this park's prehistoric past and then tackling one of the most highly coveted sections of whitewater in the country. Welcome to Dinosaur National Monument. The park is spread over two states, the Colorado side with awesome canyons and epic rivers, and the Utah side with more than a thousand dinosaur bones. Back in 1909, a paleontologist named Earl Douglas not only hit the mother load of dinosaur bones here in Utah, but he was the first guy to suggest leaving them where they were found. I've seen dinosaur fossils in a museum before, but never in the exact spot in which they were found. The thought of walking into this quarry and laying eyes on hundreds of dinosaur fossils, it's pretty hard to wrap my head around. I really want to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This guy's like the king of the jungle, but of dinosaurs. Dan Churi has been the lead paleontologist here for nearly 40 years. He's going to show us the world famous Wall of Bones. The wall contains 1,500 fossilized dinosaur bones from the Jurassic era. That means they're at least 150 million years old. It's one of the greatest dinosaur quarries that has ever been found. So how did all of these fossils collect in the same exact spot? Well, this is uh, the result of two things, a drought and a flood. Basically, a drought killed the dinosaurs, and then an eventual flood carried all their bones down the river to this spot. 11 different dinosaur species were found here. So this is one of the most spectacular specimens in the present day quarry phase. It's a T-Rex. No. <laughs> this is a late Jurassic camarasaurus, which is a large herbivorous sauropod. Oh, wow. These dinosaurs are about 150 million years old. T-Rex goes extinct about 63, 64 million years ago. So we are actually closer to T-Rex by about 30 million years than the dinosaurs that are buried here in the quarry. Wow. And visitors to this Jurassic Park are actually invited to touch the bones. The rock is really hard and the bone is really very hard, so you can actually get a chance to touch these things just as they were buried 150 million years ago. Wow. Here, we have a fair part of a Diplodocus skeleton. This is a thigh bone from a Diplodocus. That's a thigh bone? Here's another one over here. And this dinosaur right here, how big was this An guy? An adult Diplodocus would get about 80 feet long and weigh about 20 tons. OK, so thigh bone might be a little bit bigger than mine. Yes. <laughs> Diplodocus was an herbivore, meaning it got that big eating only vegetation. It had a long neck and it had two rows of bones instead of one to support its extra long tail. It is so crazy that we get to actually touch dinosaur bones. And now we're getting to do something that only the researchers get to do, actually climb this fossil wall. One of the most spectacular things up here is this bone. And this is a single bone from the neck of a patasaurus. A patasaurus gets to be about 80 feet long and weighs about 40 tons. One rib is roughly the size of my entire body. So just when I thought this day couldn't get any more awesome, Dan's got another plan for us. He's taking us up to the dinosaur trackway, an area where we're actually going to be able to observe the literal footprints of dinosaurs. 
Oh, wow. That's it? You can see this large track oh, with three toes. Gosh. How big of a dinosaur left this track right here? It's a bit hard to tell exactly, but it's probably from an animal that may be 15 to 20 feet long. Wow. So this is 50 million years old, roughly? Yeah, it's about 190 million years. This is 190 yeah. million years old, and it's a dinosaur track that we are looking at today. Right? So if we get up here, this is one of the nicest dinosaur footprints on the entire face. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, is that it? Yeah, so this is it. You can see it's depressed into the sand a bit, and here's the heel. And these circular areas are the individual fleshy pads on the underside of the toe. And the middle toe is always the longest. And the last pad there, you can see this triangle. That's the impression of the claw. Yeah. Although we don't know exactly what kind of dinosaur this was, Dan tells us the claws suggest this was a meat eater. It's like looking back in time. It is looking back in time. Yeah. <laughs> My idea of the national parks just seems to get bigger and bigger with each visit. You've got your natural beauty, and now we are looking at dinosaur tracks from millions and millions of years ago. Uh, my mind is blown. <laughs> Learning about these dinosaurs has been awesome, but it's time to switch gears from super ancient wildlife to this wildlife. Dude, not that wild, this wild. Oh, yeah! Oh! We're in Dinosaur National Monument, and we've crossed over to the Colorado side. Over the next two days, we're gonna be rafting a 20-mile section of the Green River that contains some of the craziest white water in the country. The water flow is controlled by a dam upstream. Right now is the one week where the gates are basically wide open, and the water is flowing, and it's flowing fast. And all that extra water ups the intensity of the rapids we'll be hitting. So what was going to be class two and maybe class three rapids is now class three, three plus, and four. I don't know what a class four looks like, <laughs> you know? No. We're about to find out the hard way. River Ranger Tappan Brown knows the Green River inside and out. We can practice those paddle strokes, let's talk about what we're going to do in certain situations. And then later on this afternoon, we got some of the bigger rapids that we're going to go through today. Yes. Good to go. Oh yeah, that's cool. We've got a mile of flat water to practice our safety signals. Are you okay? Uh, yes, I'm okay. Our rowing technique. You gotta keep an eye on each other. Ah, together. There you together. go, together. And how we're going to deal with the big rapids we'll face later today. We're gonna go up like this. Lean into the wave. Lean into the wave. Yep. If you did fall into the river, you're gonna go into that defensive swim position, nose and toes up out of the water. Before we hit the major rapids, we have a chance to take in this spectacular canyon. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Do you see how it's kind of like pulled out up there? It's almost like an arena. Yeah. The Green River has carved this red rock out of the Uinta Mountains over millions of years. In some stretches, the walls tower over 3,000 feet above the river. The current's picking up, and we don't have to wait long for our first challenge. And four, three, one, two, three. Oh, oh. Yes. All right. All right. That's a reminder for me to stay firm. It's wow. a good test. Let's go four, three, one, two, oh. three. Oh. Oh. I get excited so oh. easily out here. The water starts picking up, and Tappan tells us we're nearing Disaster Falls, so named from the John Wesley Powell expedition. Powell was the first man to explore all these rivers down through the Grand Canyon. And the first major rapid he came to as well, Disaster, Disaster fell. They lost a boat, they lost all kinds of supplies and equipment, and made the rest of their journey much more difficult. Disaster Falls is a class four rapid, which to us means it's gonna be big and scary. This might be the biggest rapid we've ever seen, and definitely something that we want to scout ahead of time. Let's land right here. Yep. There are two parts to Disaster Falls. Oh, man. Upper Disaster Falls. A couple big rocks are right out there. We're heading right for it. Going to punch right through it with a little speed momentum. Current is going to be pushing you pretty hard right, and you don't want to go right towards the wall. Now, a look at the lower section of the falls. 
Oh man, this is the daddy of them right oh here. Oh my gosh, do you see that one? Oh, pretty steep. Yeah. We hit something like that, almost guaranteed we're gonna flip and be swimming. Not a lot of working room here. Our best bet is a little bit of power, speed, and a good angle. Here we go. Paddles at the ready. Here we go, disaster fall. Let's go for it, three. Get out for it, out for it. but yep. we made it through. There's no time to rest. Lower disaster is straight ahead. Oh! 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 We made it through disaster, but we've got one more obstacle to go before we make camp for the night. Oh, man. You got some nasty rocks up there. Harp Falls is a class three rapid, but with all the extra water in the river, the waves are bigger and more unpredictable than normal. Jeez, this is one after another, man. Oh, baby, here we come. Oh. Let's go all forward. All forward! Oh, oh my! As you can see, heart falls. <laughs> Not to be taken lightly. Oh, man. That was epic. Big I, waves. Those yeah. were huge. Got her. You got her. I'll stay up here. <laughs> oh, man. It's time to set up camp. And as we go to bed, we can hear Triplet Falls roaring in the background. Our first challenge tomorrow morning. We thought our biggest challenge was behind us. Turns out we may be wrong. We're up bright and early, and it's time to begin our second day on the Green River. Today, we've got two big rapids to conquer. First up, Triplet Falls, just downriver from camp. And after that, it's straight on to Hell's Half Mile. How do you think that's gonna compare intensity-wise to what we did yesterday? A little bit more zigzagging. We gotta kinda weave our way through some of the rocks to set ourselves up for for the rest of the run. So right off the bat, what are we looking at with Triplet? Triplet is a class three rapid that has some very large boulders on the right wall. So you gotta work your way away. And if not, then you could put yourself in some hazard. Let's grab the tent, grab our courage, and let's do it. <laughs> and we're ready to run Triplet. All right. Okay. We got paddles at the ready. Paddles at the ready. All right, let's go four, three. Triplet Falls starts only 50 feet downstream from our camp, so we've got no real time to prepare. Forward. Stop. Here's the turn. Yep. I think those rocks are going to be right on the uh -huh. other side. So to handle Triplet Falls, we cut it to the left. We're still gonna hit that wave train, but make sure we're definitely staying away from these boulders. Whoa, baby! Oh, baby! Woohoo! Four and three! Yeah! Yeah! All yeah. back, all back, all back! Feeling better today? Oh, yeah. yeah! No better way to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Hitting Triplet Falls was a great way to warm up to a day of rapids because Hell's Half Mile is coming quickly. All right, guys, we're approaching the scout for hells. You set your paddles down, make sure you jump out and catch us here so we don't go through the rapid before taking a look at it. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gets deep. <Yeah. laughs> These rivers are constantly changing. Even somebody as knowledgeable as Tappan isn't exactly sure what this river might be looking like on a day like today. I mean, the water flow is eight times the strength that it normally is. So that means this rapid is gonna look completely different than how it does most of the year. Oh, the white water. Oh, man. I can already see that 
There's gonna be a little bit of maneuvering around some boulders. We got a huge wave. And we'll hit that first one, it's gonna to wanna to spin us. Might have to have one of you guys, just one of you paddle to try and help me turn the boat around so that we're square. If we hit one of those sideways, we're going in the water. Immediately to the left of the first rapid, I see a strainer. A strainer is a log or a tree that is out in the river. That's extremely hazardous. With a strainer, the water can get through. You can't. We got to stay focused. We just got to stay focused and keep it going. It's good to be nervous when you're attacking something like this. You never want to let your guard down. All right, here we go. Here we go. <sighs> oh, boy. 4-3, four, 4-3. Three, four, three. Stop. When we head into Whitewater, I become like a robot. I am absolutely locked in and listening to every command that Tappan's giving us. All forward, all forward! We build up speed and we go crashing right into the first wave. We make it through, but it knocks us a bit sideways. As we come up to the crest of the second wave, we start to feel the boat rise up. We've just entered one of the most notorious sections of whitewater on the Green River. All forward, all forward! We go crashing right into the first wave. As we come up to the crest of the second wave, you can start to feel the boat rise up. For a second, I feel like I'm levitating. And just like that, we're in the water. It's cold and powerful. Miraculously, somehow, I've got a hand on the boat. And just like that, Tappan is already on top of the boat, pulling up Jack. At this point, we're just grabbing onto whatever we can. It's certainly not ideal, but riding on top of the raft is absolutely safer than being in the river. We're all good, boys. We're all good. Woo! Luckily for us, there's an island right in the middle of the river. As soon as we reach the island, Tappan goes into action mode. Thumbs towards you. Thumbs towards you. Yep, I got you, I got you. It seems all around us, there's just total chaos. But we all look at each other and realize that nobody's hurt. We made it out of this thing in one piece, and really, that's all that counts. I saw you come right oh. at me. It felt like I was, like, just hanging in midair. As we try to right the ship, we realize how incredibly heavy our boat is, which shows you the power of the rapid that we just went through. <sighs> Ah, oh, man. Ready? Yep. yep. One, two, three. Got it. Pull, pull. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Oh. We load the boat back up, hop in, and just like that, we're back on the river. Tappan is able to guide us through the last few hundred feet, and we're in the clear. I think it's a good time we could take off these helmets, put on our sunglasses and hats if you got them. Cool. I'm cool. down to that. Do you still have your hat? The hat made it. Oh, <laughs> oh the hat made yeah. it. How did the hat so make out. it? <laughs> this hat made it. <laughs> now all we have to do is relax, go down through a few more miles of this canyon, and take in the beauty of this park. So we've got a bighorn sheep right off to the left side of the river. Bighorn sheep you she might have her baby around somewhere as well. Look at the, the geese. The geese. Yeah, they fare better in the rapids than we did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just getting warmer and warmer. Time for one last dip before we end our trip. But this time, it's intentional. This place has been a wild ride from start to finish. Once you hear of Dinosaur National Monument, you think of the bones and the fossils, but we got to experience how remote this park really is and get to feel that punch of the river. Ooh. It brings out the kid in you. Yeah! And then at the same time, this place brought out the adult in you. Thinking about safety, being ultra focused. When we flipped, the only reason we were OK is because Tappan had told us exactly what to do. This guy has navigated this river countless times. And honestly, it was through that that we came out of an experience that I know both of us will never forget. And remember, hey, if we can do it, 
so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.